Hello, everyone. Uh, this photo shows uh, our university's campus. Uh, we have three campuses, Tamachi in 2031, and uh, Suzuka Kedai campus and Okayama campus. The, in these two campuses, uh, we can uh, enjoy the very beautiful cherry blossoms. Uh, if you can possible, uh, please come our uni uh, uh, campuses in cherry blossom seasons. Okay, let's start my talk. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to this workshop as a keynote speaker. I would like to thank uh, the sub supporting organizations and the all committee members. I would also like to thank my colleague, uh, professors Machida, Miyake, Sone, Ishihara, uh, Ito, and the Crest team at Tokyo Tech for their contribution in uh, R&D on ultra-high sensitive inertial sensors and their applications. Today, uh, I'll be talking about co-creating sustainable eco ecosystem from the viewpoint of electronics. Here are two topics. Uh, first, I will introduce our recent work on a highly sensitive inertial sensor that is an accelerometer and its application to early diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. This work is a bottom-up approach from the viewpoint of semiconductor. Next, I would like to discuss what we can do to promote green innovation and carbon neutrality from the viewpoint of semiconductor R&D and academia. So uh, let's begin. The conventional accelerometer that is equipped, for example, in your smartphone, can detect uh, point 0.1z uh, to several z. Our challenge is to develop a higher sensitive accelerometer which has micro Z or nano Z sensitivity. These photos are CMOS MEMS accelerometer. The, these are the uh, proof mass uh, located uh, center of uh, chips, which is fabricated using a MEMS process, that is a micro electromechanical system technology. In typical CMOS uh, MEMS accelerometer, MEMS part is formed beside the CMOS area, as shown in this figure. In the chip photos, surrounding areas, or uh, this is a CMOS circuit area, has been reduced uh, due to the CMOS scaling. We can sunk miniaturization. However, the proof mass area has not been reduced. In other words, the area reduction that is the most important point of CMOS scaling is not realized. The reason is that the weight of the proof mass is directly related to the accelerometer sensitivity. In order to ensure sensitivity, the area of proof mass cannot be reduced. This slide shows some schematic cross-sectional cross view of our CMOS MEMS structure. Among them, we employed B. MEMS part is fabricated on CMOS circuit so-called uh, post-CMOS technique. The reason uh, for the post-CMOS technique, uh, technique is, is that the post-CMOS technology can ensure the freedom of material choice of the proof mass. However, uh, below 400 C degree uh, process is required to ensure the thermal budget. The importance is that any material can be used uh, to uh, can be used for proof mass. 
Furthermore, commodity CMOS process is also available. The circuit designer can design the CMOS MEMS chip using the foundry design kit, just as the same as the usual CMOS circuit design. I will explain why we use gold as proof mass. The Brownian noise uh, is expressed by this equation. M is the density of proof mass. The Brownian noise is inversely proportional to the density. This figure uh, shows the Brownian noise. Uh, horizontal axis uh, is a side of square uh, of proof mass. The thickness of proof mass is assumed to be 12 micron. In this figure, if the size side of square of proof, ma a proof mass is the same, uh, for example, 130 micrometer, the Brownian noise when we use silicon as proof mass is around 800 micro Z per root hertz. But if we use gold as proof mass, the Brownian noise is reduced to less than 100 micro Z per root hertz. This is the reason why we use gold as proof mass. This slide shows recently developed a micro Z CMOS MEMS a single axis inertial sensor. For Four corners of gold proof mass is suspended by spring. The capacitance change is uh, detected as oscillation period of R RC circuit. This slide shows cheap photos, gold and spring and stopper. Uh, these are the enlarged uh, photos of spring and stopper. The size of proof mass is 4 mm by 4 mm. The CMOS circuit is fabricated under the proof mass. Uh, CMOS technology uh, in this chip is uh, one point, uh, point 0.18 micrometer CMOS uh, process. This slide shows measurement results. Uh, this slide uh, figures in the oscillation period when uh, plus minus uh, 100 milli Z is applied. And this is a period as a function of acceleration. The total noise uh, of CMOS MEMS, uh, this sensor, was found to be uh, 44 micro Z per root hertz. These photos are CMOS uh, MEMS uh, chips and modules. In this figure, uh, this figure shows the sensing module uh, for detecting small, small acceleration. Uh, in this figure, and, uh, the sensing module is attached to the index finger, the tremor. Small vibration of the finger can be detected. This table uh, list the performance uh, of CMOS MEMS accelerometers. Our sensors uh, use the gold proof mass uh, so that Brownian noise, uh, Brownian noise, which is listed here, had a very small uh, Brownian noise compared with another uh, data. So uh, we can be, uh, we now believe that the further uh, improvement of total noise can be possible. This slide shows the total noise of CMOS MEMS accelerometer versus Brownian noise of proof mass. Our device has a smaller Brownian noise uh, of proof mass as well as a total noise as compared with the previously reported devices. Here, I want to answer the frequently asked question. Question is, gold is soft. Isn't gold uh, proof mass unsuitable for MEMS proof mass? Our answer is gold is not soft. 
the yield strength of our, our gold is about half done of silicon. This higher yield strength is originated from the design of electroplating solution and the control of grain size and alloy composition. Now, uh, let's move on the next, uh, 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 next, uh, uh, let's move on to the application. Parkinson's disease originates from the insufficient uh, dopamine secretion. It is well known that uh, the Michael J. Fox, the famous actor from the movie Back to the Future, suffered from Parkinson's disease for over 20 years. Mean age of onset is around uh, 60. There has not been permanent cure so that early diagnosis is important to improve the quality of life of patients. Typical symptoms of Parkinson's disease are gait disorder, osteal disorder, and tremor, that is small vibration of fingers. Progress of the disease uh, is indicated by the HY scale or a modified HY index from one to three, four, five. We have been trying to measure the myomedical kinetic information and the nervous system information for diagnosis using inertial sensors. The highly sensitive inertial sensor is necessary in order to detect the nervous system information. Recently, we have successfully detected the silent muscle sound. I will show the preliminary result later. This slide shows our approach to measurements and uh, potential di diagnosis. These measurements were carried out with collaboration of medical doctors. We would like to also express our grateful, uh, our deepest gratitude to the many patients who cooperated in the measurements. I will show the results of gate trajectory measurement. In this experiment, uh, the inertial sensor is attached to the ankle. Two figures uh, shows the left and the right leg trajectories. Four figures here uh, is the, uh, are the trajectories of severe PD, Parkinson's disease patients, uh, mild uh, PD patients, healthy elderly, and healthy young. Each point of uh, this figure uh, represents the uh, stride length and the lifting heights of the subject. We use uh, the principal component analysis the horizontal and uh, vertical axis are the first and second principal components, respectively. The horizontal axis is mainly related to the slide length, stride length, and vertical axis is the lifting heights. From these right figures, we have discussed the classifier based on machine learning. As shown in this figure, uh, the healthy elderly and uh, early PD patients can be classified with an accu accuracy of more than 96%. This is the uh, best result so far. Using the same figure, we can discuss stride and lifting height features of each group. Normal aging result in a shorter stride and a lower lifting of the foot. However, with onset of Parkinson's disease, the stride is shortened, but the foot is lifted higher. These trends indicate the periodic medical checkups, including measurement of stride length and leg lift height, can lead to the early detection of Parkinson's disease onset, that is, early diagnosis. 
Furthermore, it may be possible to consider what the signs of sub-symptoms sub are. Recently, we have taken on the challenge of detecting the silent muscle sound using newly developed high-sensitive accelerometer. The sensitivity is to order of magnitude lower than that of commercially available devices. As shown in this, uh, as shown in light figures, the sensor is attached uh, to the flexor pollicis uh, bravis muscle. These are preliminary uh, results of successful detection of silent muscle sound. The, these figures are muscle sound spectra of healthy elderly and PD patients. These are the difference in the spectrum above 15 hertz between subject in pitch and rest states. To summarize, our work has been carried out uh, by collaboration of materials, devices, circuits, and systems, and application, including machine uh, learning and medical doctors. Our emphasis is on the importance of interdisciplinary research, which is also the key to opening up new areas. I want to say, it is critical to avoid withdrawing into a semiconductor shell. The early diagnosis of dis diseases, uh, diseases requires detection of silent or hidden signs. Ultra-high sensitive sensor will help this requirement with the progress of big data analysis. This discussion will lead to the new field of sub-symptoms. Sub Okay, now let's uh, shift our viewpoint and examine the potential of semiconductors from a much broader perspective. The second topic is top-down approach. Last September, the Japanese government uh, declared that it would steer its policies toward carbon neutrality by 2050 and announced its green strategy. Expected impacts by 2050 include a 2.5 trillion US dollar boost to the economy and the creation of employment for 18 million people. Many Japanese government agencies are planning and implementing a number of policies based on the green strategy. Various initiatives have also been launched around the world. In Japan, METI, or the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, announced their green innovation strategy last year. 14 sectors, as listed on this slide, are expected to grow as a result of green innovation. Research and de development fund projects has been launched sequentially. I'm now serving as a chair of a project committee, which also includes uh, President Hideo Ono of Tohoku University. It should be noted that semiconductors are also designated as an area of growth, and the details of semiconductor project are under discussion. So what we can do to contribute to green innovation? I would like to propose three of my suggestions. First, I would like to emphasize again the importance of industry, government, academia, collaboration. In Japan, government has already formulated a green growth strategy and created a research and development fund to encourage R&D in industries, as I already explained. Some universities will also actively participate. 
in order to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050, new science and technology R&D are indispensable, especially from academia. Industry uh, will be required to promote more industry academia collaborative research on the path toward the carbon neutrality. Interdisciplinary research that involves wide science and technology fields is essential to achieving carbon neutrality. I think that we academia should be more aware of university industry collaboration than ever. As shown in the bottom left frame, several semiconductor research centers may be formulated in Japan. Let me emphasize two points regarding these research centers. The first is to be aware of carbon neutrality. The second is in terms of building of a research network. Our research management and intelligence must be strengthened because carbon neutrality driven R&D is very diverse. Furthermore, this academia network should not be confined to Japan, but should be strengthened and developed as an international network. For this reason, I believe that it's necessary to strengthen the network between Japan and Taiwan, especially among universities. Finally, I would like to propose a green chip for carbon neutral semiconductors. What is a green chip? LSI should be green designed with a zero emissions environment. All materials and manufacturing processes should be green, that is, with zero emissions. We would like, uh, we would have to promote R&D for materials, processes, and equipment used at the green fabs. Manufacturing fabs should be operated by renewable energy. Pure water recycling, zero waste water and waste chemicals would also be required. EV transport and automated driving would be required. Based on regularization and standardization, a green chip inside would be recommended for electronic systems. Furthermore, green fabs could be certified and chips from non-green fabs could be differentiated through taxation and so on. The next challenge, which is described in this column would be the creation of a super green chip to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. I propose uh, two. First, uh, one is a renewable semiconductor chip. In order, uh, this means uh, we would not dispose used semiconductor chip but the used chip would be recycled to fabricate new chips. The following R&D would be required for new technology, new design, device, and process technologies, new infrastructure that include network for collection of used chip, extracting chip from collected products. From the chip, we would have to extract materials that could be used again for the next uh, new chips. Second one is from another viewpoint. R&D and manufacturing disposable chips made only from eco-friendly materials could also be an interesting op uh, option. In summary, uh, today I presented two different perspectives. First, I introduced our recent research work on ultra-high sensitive inertial sensor and its application. Our emphasis 
is on the importance of interdisciplinary research, which is also the key to opening up to new areas. I want to stress that we should not withdraw into a semiconductor shell. Second, strengthening uh, industry government academia collaboration and international academic networks and embracing challenge of green chip and uh, super green chip. I believe these topics will stimulate further discussion and collaboration and will encourage us to continue creating a better future together. Thank you very much for your attention.